Hello, am I speaking to Socks? What's up, MVT? It's been too long. Well, 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 you're a hard man to get in touch with these days, Mr. Undefeated at the YCS. I have a little favor I need to ask of you. No, I'm, I'm retired. Retired. Out of the game. Out of the game. Oh, well, you haven't heard me sweeten the pot yet. There's new volcano. No, those cards suck. Oh. He hung up. And this isn't a phone. It's a glasses case. I'm filming on my phone. You've been tricked. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. If you're unfamiliar, 1TMT a month is decided not by the whims of the algorithm, but by the whims of my high-tier Patreons. This month, they wanted to see the most playable GX archetype. No, not Dark World. No, not Crystal Beast. And certainly not Hero. Presenting Volcanic. Excellent. So here's the list. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is the number one place to go if you need a pack simulator, a card database, or want to read a wealth of strategy articles. They also post breakdowns and lists from every major TCG and Master Duel tournament, including the Master Circuit Series. Give them a look at www.ygopro. D -E -C -K .com. With that, let's vamanos into Volcanic. Volcanic is a series of monsters used by Axel Brody. Sorry, I mean Austin O'Brien in the GX anime. Each monster has the capacity to be loaded into their associated series of continuous spells and traps, the Blaze Accelerators, or kind of like little mini guns that shoot pyros. Despite what accounts like Pain would have you believe, Volcanic has been very playable multiple times throughout Yu-Gi-Oh's history, as a dedicated engine in Ryza Dex circa 2007, as an advantage engine alongside Quick Draw or a stun engine alongside Black Garden in 2010, as an anti-meta strategy right before the release of Necroz in 2015, and as a splash in decks playing Paleozoic Morella for the first few months of 2017's Zodiac format. This is a deck with a fanatic fanbase and big shoes to fill, so when it was finally retrained after almost a decade of no support, expectations were high. And did it hit the target? Uh, it's hard to say. The new cards coming in the Fire Duelist pack in a few months are good for sure, but they're good in a way that's really hard to explain, and for purposes that aren't necessarily in line with the way we play Yu-Gi-Oh now. See, Volcanic was known for converting individual cards into one-for-one -one removal, and playing what amounted to a Howling Mine in Blaze Accelerator Reload. But in current Yu-Gi-Oh, an archetype full of cards that go even on advantage really isn't enough especially when it has to contend with cards like Branded Fusion and Kashtira Unicorn, which are themselves full combo. As a result, we are playing it alongside Runic, hoping to convert card advantage into something useful, access to targeted interruption that can occasionally also draw us three cards. That said, this might not even be the best home for the archetype. I know Lithium's experimented with Sprite, for instance, so if you have any other ideas, let us know below. For now, here's the card by card. First, the new Volcanics. We're playing two copies of Volcanic Emperor. This card can't be normal summoned or set. It has to be special summoned from your hand or graveyard by banishing three Pyro Monsters or one Blaze Accelerator card from your face-up field or grave. When summoned this way, you can inflict 500 damage to your opponent for each of your banished Pyro Monsters, then set a Volcanic Trap directly from your deck, and that's time in the round. Get excited about the burning. It's a running theme. Each time your opponent special summons a monster, they take 500 damage, and you can only special summon Volcanic Emperor once per turn. Next up is three copies of Volcanic Trooper. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add a volcanic card from your deck to your hand, except for Trooper. You can discard a card, special summon a bomb token to your opponent's field, which gives you a target for cards like Blaze Accelerator, and when the token is destroyed, its controller takes 500 damage. Three copies of Volcanic Rimfire. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can activate one of these effects. Either banish this card from your graveyard, and if you do set a volcanic monster from your deck to your graveyard, except itself, or banish a Blaze Accelerator card from your face-up field or graveyard, and if you do, put a Blaze Accelerator continuous spell or trap from your hand or deck face-up into your field. This is a way to get the trap going as early as turn one. Now the old Volcanics, we have one copy of Volcanic Queen, which can't be normal summoned or set, can only be special summoned from your hand to your opponent's side of the field by tributing a monster your opponent controls. And if you special summon this card, you can't normal summon or set this turn. Once per turn, you can send another card you control to the graveyard to inflict the thousand damage to your opponent. That, of course, is something your opponent's able to activate, except during the end phase, you have to either tribute another monster or take a thousand damage. After that, we've got three copies of Rocket, which on summon adds a Blaze Accelerator, three copies of Volcanic Scattershot, which if sent to the graveyard, not only inflicts 500 points of damage to your opponent, but can nuke the board by sending two additional Volcanic Scatter shots from your hand or deck to the graveyard. 
graveyard, and Volcanic Shell, which once per turn allows you to pay 500 to add a Volcanic Shell from your deck to your hand, provided it is in the graveyard. We're also playing one copy of Tier Limit Merly. Over the course of our combo, we're going to clear out the extra monster zone by linking off something like a Hugin or a Gary, and we have the ability to go into Sprint, which can send the Merly and make a copy of Dragostopelia as part of an end board. Next, we have the new Volcanic Spells. Volcanic Blaze Accelerator can be activated by sending a Blaze Accelerator from your hand or deck or face a field to the graveyard. You can only control one Volcanic Blaze Accelerator, and then once per turn, you can special Volcanic Monster from your hand. Once per turn, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls, send a level one Pyro Monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, destroy the targeted monster. I can't believe they printed this card. It does absolutely everything, and your opponent will always have a monster because of the effect of Rimfire. We're playing one Blaze Accelerator. It's the Garnet of this engine, and three copies of Fire Ejection. You get to send a Pyro from your deck to the graveyard. Then if it's a Volcanic, you can either inflict damage to your opponent equal to its level times 100, or special a Bomb Token to your opponent's side of the field. Next, we've got the Runa cards, three copies of Freezing Curses, three copies of Tip, three copies of Slumber, three copies of Flashing Fire, two Destruction, and two Fountain. For traps, we're on two Blaze Accelerator Reload, which becomes Tri Blaze Accelerator while in the Spell and Trap Card Zone, and during the main phase, can send a Volcanic card from your hand to the graveyard, except Volcanic Eruption, and draw a card. That's a once per turn, and during either player's main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard to send a Volcanic card from your deck to the graveyard, except Eruption, and finally, Volcanic Inferno. When your opponent activates a monster effect on the field, you can banish a Pyro monster from your graveyard to inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Then if you banished a volcanic monster, you can negate that activated effect. And during your opponent's end phase, you can target two of your volcanic monsters that are banished during your graveyard and put them at the bottom of the deck in any order, meaning you have an inevitability they could never hope to reach. In the extra, we've got Dragostopelia, Gary, Two Hugin, Zeus, Downard Magician, Lyralisk, Assembled Nightingale, because we're on a lot of ones, Access Code Talker, Nightmares, Unicorn, and Phoenix, Heat to the Fire, Charmer, Ablaze, Sprite, Sprint, IP Mascarena, Salamand, Great Almirage, and Relinquished Anima. A lot of ways to get exactly Volcanic Shell off your field and into the graveyard. In the side, we've got two more copies of Queen, one Harpy's Feather Duster, three Dark Ruler No More, three Twin Twister. I like Twin Twister a little more than other forms of Spell Trap Destruction, just because we really want to be discarding Shell, three Evenly Matched, and three Rivalry of Warlords. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Adventure Runic, that's also splashing a small branded package. This is a sweet deck, but also a perfect test of my power. We're going first, and this hand looks fine. Kind of hard to tell with a deck like Volcanic Runic because it's all going to cycle. We're going to begin with a copy of Volcanic Rocket, getting a Volcanic Blaze Accelerator and sending a Blaze Accelerator to the graveyard before firing off a tip. We're going to grab from deck to hand a Runic Spell before going for a Destruction to summon a monster from the extra. We're going to retain the Slumber because, of course, we can activate it turn one. Then we'll go Fountain and afterwards trigger the effect of the Shell in order to add one from deck to hand. From here, we're going to link summon a copy of Sprint, then activate the effect of the Sprint to send a copy of Merly. That's going to allow us to go into a Predaplant Dragostopelia. From here, we can activate Slumber, targeting our copy of Sprint, and we can draw a couple of cards of the process. Let's get three off the top. I'm really hoping for something crazy. That qualifies. We're going to special summon that shell out and go into Anima. That's enough material for a Emperor. We'll activate the effect of the Emperor, deal 1500 to our opponent, and that is time in the round. We will set the trap, which we really care about, Volcanic Inferno here, and then pass back to our opponent. They're going to begin with a copy of Flashing Fire, targeting our Dragostopelia, and then followed up with a copy of Fallen of Albaz. Thankfully, we have the negation for that. Otherwise, we would lose everything. We'll go Fountain afterwards to shuffle back one because we don't have anything else interesting to be doing. Our opponent's going to go Branded Fusion terrible to go into Albion. They'll take five in the process, but they do get to get to Mirror Jade here. How are we going to beat that card? They're going to cycle their battle phase for the runic spells and then pass it back to us, at which point we'll trigger the effect of our trap. Oh, that's a way to beat it. We'll give our opponent a Volcanic Queen. We're going to lose our board here. We'll go Unicorn to spin the Queen because we want to retain it in the deck, and then we'll trigger the effect of the Rimfire in order to go ahead and get a copy of Blaze Accelerator Reload. Now the Advantage Train is really going. We can add a couple of cards to hand every turn. We'll go to battle phase to clear our own runic and then pass back to our opponent, losing our board to the Mirror Jade. They're going to go for a Rite of Aramisir. That's going to get them a token and Fateful Adventure. They'll activate Fateful Adventure for the Wandering Griffin Rider, then Draco back targeting their token. Afterwards, they are going to bounce the Runic Fountain, which is fine because we really only have one thing we can do with it anyway. We'll go Blaze Accelerator Reload here for the Scattershot. We'll activate Scattershot, sending two more Scattershots. And even though we are basically at parity here, we have inevitability because of all this damage that we're doing in the Emperor and Graveyard. We're going to go Scattershot a couple of times, and of course the Inferno checks this Wandering Griffin Rider. Our opponent does have follow-up. They're going to go Tip in order to search a copy of Runic Fountain then set the fountain, and what do you know, that's a clear EMZ. Let's go flashing fire in order to grab a Hugin, trigger the effect of the fountain in order to draw three, for which we have nothing to respond with. They'll go Munin at end step to gain a thousand, but it's probably not going to be enough. Let's chase out as much as we can. We're going to begin with a copy of Fire Ejection, giving them a bomb. Then afterwards, we'll activate Rimfire in order to send a copy of Queen. We'll go Runic Fountain here and tip 
they're going to destruction, targeting our runic fountain, which is not a big deal, because it means our tip can search destruction, then at resolution, when they go for fountain, we can fire destruction, targeting their fountain. They're going to immune in here, but guess what? Inferno negates regardless, which means we are able to destroy it and prevent them from drawing. We'll go Blaze Accelerator Reload, and down comes Emperor for a whopping 4,500 points of damage. Our second match is up against Cash Tira, and this hand is... It's kind of hard again to say how it's going to turn out. We're going to begin with a copy of Volcanic Trooper, and there's the Infinite Impermanence. No big deal, no big deal. We can draw out of it. We're going to go Runic Fountain, followed up with a Freezing Curses for a Hugin. Hugin can get one of these cards into the graveyard, then at resolution we can go Slumber, targeting our Hugin and draw three. Let's get it just a little bit twisted here, and... Okay, those are all right. We're going to go on a Sprind. Sprind will send a copy of Merley to the graveyard. That's going to allow us to flex as part of our end board. A copy of Part of Plant Dragus Topelia will set two and pass back to our opponent, who draws for turn in Ash Blossom right on time. They're going to go for a Pressure Planet into a Fenrir. They'll activate the effect of the Fenrir. We will Dragus Topelia, and thankfully it is not at risk of being banished either. They'll go Prosperity afterwards, finding off the top. Uh, pretty weak top cards for Prosperity. Afterwards, they're going to go ahead and go to the battle phase. We will activate Slumber so our monster survives. And then at point of resolution, we could theoretically go for Runic Fountain, but I'm a little greedy here. They're going to go Birth and a Fenrir into Normal Ash Blossom into Baron de Fleur, and I am rewarded! They will take a card out of our hand and activate the effect of the Baron de Fleur. Our set card is Freezing Curses, so we can negate. They can activate Baron, of course, which negates activations, which means we aren't going to be able to activate Runic Fountain, but any Runic spell does it, and that's the best one. Baron here into Fenrir, we will drag us to Pelia once again during standby phase, and then we will fire off the tip. We'll activate tip's effect in order to grab a flashing fire, and oh god, I forgot how birth works here. Okay, we are going to lose our entire graveyard. No big deal, we should still be able to do it. Unicorn spin this Fenrir. We're fine, provided they don't draw, like, the craziest possible thing in their deck. Oh my god! Every time against this deck. Alright, we can go for Flashing Fire. We're hoping to draw Freezing Curses here, because it doesn't really matter. They can use Birth to bring it back. There's Unicorn, there's Theosis, and we are done! We are done. They're gonna go Theosis into Fenrir, into Riseheart, into Riseheart... Into Overlay for Shangri-Ira, into Rise Heart, Banishing Big Bang, Big Bang Cycle Shangri-Ira in order to bring back, I imagine, the Fenrir, and then afterwards they can activate Wraith Soth to clear our board. They're going to go a Rise Heart, go into the battle phase. Uh, let's just go next. Oh, I'm just a little bit upset about that last one. I feel like I had the tools to win it. I was just playing a little more like Austin O'Brien than Axel Brody. Well, it's time for game three, and you know what that means. A best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Pearly, and we have opened pretty well. Uh, let's see where it goes. We're going to begin with a copy of Fountain. We will activate Freezing Curses. We're going to go ahead and grab a copy of Hugin. We'll activate the Hugin effect. They let it resolve. Thankfully, that gets the shell out of our hand. We can draw a card off that. Next, we're going to activate Runic Slumber to draw a couple of cards. We are going to use Fountain, targeting two in the graveyard. Uh, to cycle into pieces of interaction. That's pretty good. We're going to go Sprint here and Rimfire. They will infinite permanence the Sprint. That's fine. I would have traded for one card anyway. We do get the Rimfire, so we will pass back to our opponent, at which point they will activate Sleepy Memory in the draw phase. Down comes Pearly. They'll activate Pearly's effect, finding off the top. Nothing. Flat nothing. Oh boy, don't you love to see it. Main phase one, they're going to activate Street. That sucks. It means we have to Flashing Fire now, but it's still fine. We're going to go for the Fountain afterwards. We draw a Blaze Accelerator. They'll go My Friend Pearly afterwards and add from deck to hand a Delicious Memory unsurprising. Next up is Lily. They're going to use Lily for Leap and activate Delicious Memory before activating the effect of Lily, which eats a Freezing Curses. We'll negate the effect. Thankfully, this was Normal Summoned, which means our opponent has to set a Leap and pass. We should be able to clean up from this position. Pretty decent draw. We'll go for Volcanic Shell here, getting a Volcanic Shell to hand, then activating Blaze Accelerator Reload. That Battle Phase skip is going to stack, which is great news. We'll go for Emperor here and set a copy of Inferno. Then afterwards, we'll go into Nightmare Unicorn in order to shuffle back this copy of My Friend Pearly, go to the Battle Phase to reset it, and pass back to our opponent. Opponent. They draw for turn to Ghost Ogre. That is not a starter, so we should be fine here. They'll pass turn. We'll go for Inferno at end step. They will Ghost Ogre, which means we get slightly less of a plus, but it also means that we get to win the game because we have a pretty good idea what that last card is. Access code Talker here and Volcanic Emperor should be enough to seal the deal. Let's go to the battle phase, do a little bit of BMing, and move into game two. So it's time for game two, and wow, if that isn't one of the volcanic hands of all time. Well, it's got two queen in it, so I can't be too upset. They're going to begin with a copy of Pearly, Pretty Memory. That's going to get them a Pearly. They're going to activate the effect of the Pearly, finding off the top of the deck. Ah, uh, well, sometimes they do actually get it twisted. They're going to go for Delicious Memory and Draw Phase, pitching this copy of Infinite Impermanence to grab another Pearly, then activating the Pearly to find off the top. 
Okay, this time nothing great news. Afterwards, we're going to go into a Sylvan Princess Sprite, and they whiff. This is really a deck for people who like to get it twisted. They're going to go for Perlily afterwards for My Friend Perly. They'll activate the effect of the My Friend Perly in order to grab from deck to hand, unsurprisingly, a Sleepy Memory. Then they'll go Lily into, of course, Plump. Plump attach two, and then they can activate this Sleepy Memory in order to chain the Plump and go into a Noir. Well, that's the end board. We'll draw for turn, uh, and they let us go to main. Uh, apparently a little too afraid of the effect of triple tactics thrust for their own good. They will be punished by our queen, and then we will use Blaze Accelerator for its intended purpose, uh, blowing up a monster on the field. Next, we'll go Volcanic into a Volcanic Rocket. Then afterwards, they will Droll and Lockbird us. That's a little frustrating, but hardly the end of the world. We're going to go Rimfire here to send a Volcanic from deck to graveyard, then go for a Fire Ejection to send an Emperor. I imagine we can just bring it out, like do some damage at the same time. We'll Dome them for two, go to the battle phase to reset, and then pass it back to our opponent. They'll draw for turn, and this is is a little frightening. It could theoretically be the OTK, but they have to play it right, and we have to play it absolutely wrong. They'll go for Pearly here, finding off the top of the deck. Ooh, unfortunately, a spell. All right, they're going to go for Pretty Memory here. That's going to gain us both a thousand. They're going to go for Lily. That takes them down another five. They're going to go Lily Effect in order to grab, well, another Lily. Uh, they're going to go for my friend Pearly afterwards. We will Blaze Accelerator Reload. I'm just trying to draw something here. Uh, Trooper is good, but it's not fantastic. They're going to go Pearly into Happiness, and then they'll take another five. Normal Summon a Pearly, and in to assembled Nightingale. I imagine they're doing that because they don't have the OTK. Uh, they're going to go for happiness here, and we will go ahead and negate the effect, which keeps one of these happy memories off it, which might be enough. They're going to go to the battle phase, deal 100, then activate the effect of the happiness in order to grab a delicious memory. Afterwards, they're going to go for delicious memory and happiness as well. They will bounce this copy of Inferno. They're going to attack again, having it once more before activating happiness and grabbing another copy of happy memory. That's going to get them at least one more attack, and then they'll be able to bounce one more piece of interaction. But I believe that's all they are are capable of doing. They grab another delicious memory here just to do it. It increases the attack of their monster, but then they go to main phase two. Yep, and here comes the Zeus. They'll take five and then, of course, wipe the entire board, but this Emperor really is just everything we could ever want. We'll go Blaze Accelerator Reload. They're letting this go, I think trying to hold the Zeus for something a little more powerful, but I don't think it's going to be enough. We'll give them a bomb, go for a shell, and then afterwards, uh, we might as well just link off for Nightmare Phoenix, activate the effect, and then activate Emperor. Nothing you can Zeus about it. So we're back with the deck, and well, we've got a searchable kaiju, not super surprising that we beat Pearly. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, Emperor is so funny. It can absolutely steal lost games and gives you inevitability that both Runic and Volcanic were severely lacking. Two, Queen. We love to see a girl boss winning. A searchable kaiju is extremely good during the current format. And three, Runic feels right. The discards allow you to benefit off of dead rimfire and shells in the opener and convert into something playable. And the cons. One, it's not consistent. There's really not a one-card combo to set up the board. You kind of have to roll with what you open. Two, your setups are pretty low power. Your volcanics aren't exactly board builders, so the full setup is maybe one or two recursive negates. Now, this is fine. I mean, Salaman Great may do with a lot less, but it can lose to high roll cards very easily. And three, Ghost Ogre. Ghost Ogre specifically can be a devastating piece of interaction, locking you out of combos entirely if planted right. Overall, I'm not sure why everyone just sort of immediately discounted these cards. The Volcanic cards have potential, but it'll definitely take some tinkering to break them. Thanks so much for watching. A huge shouts out to all my patrons, but specifically, Elena Tincher, Alex Perea, Allison Elliott, Apocalypse978, Brett Henry, Bizen Queen, Chaotic Meatball, Kristen Malone, Crispy, Da Bears, Darkmaster Zork, DJ Elephant, Executive Slifer, John Piet, Jordan Kuntz, King Magic Ruler, Night Mary, Luis Hernandez, Materiality, MBT Play Medolce, Mike Carlotti, NH6574, Puffins of Doom, Rose Lapine, Soft Doe, Solar Flare, The Hollow King, Tootsie, Troy Says Buy Erasure is Gay, Vincent Storm, Wonder Waffle, Yuki, and Yor. I couldn't have done it without you.